Page four now, the radical left's non-existent constitutional right of 100% convenience that violates fully 50% of the Bill of Rights. This so-called right is a common practice that occurs every day in this country. In fact, people practice it hundreds of thousands of times each year. Yet, yet it violates the First Amendment. It violates the Fourth Amendment. It violates the Fifth Amendment. It violates the Sixth Amendment. And it violates the Eighth Amendment. Half the Bill of Rights. Yet, somehow, it's 100% legal. It is protected and nurtured and promoted and funded with taxpayer dollars, despite violating 50% of the first 10 amendments of the United States Constitution. Yep. Violation of amendment number one, it literally kills free speech by disposing of the rights of an innocent American while simultaneously snuffing out his or her right to practice religion, assemble, and petition government. Violation of amendment number four, it is also a clean and clear violation of the right to privacy by executing each and every time unreasonable search and, oh yeah, seizure. Violation of amendment number five. There are absolutely no due process rights for this American, depriving him or her of the right to life, liberty, personal property, while even subjecting some to double jeopardy. Violation of amendment number six. There is no speedy trial, no trial at all. And no impartial jury and no right whatsoever to confront his or her accuser. And finally, violation of amendment number eight. If there ever was an example of cruel and unusual punishment, it is this. All right, so what is the it? Abortion. The so-called legal right for a woman to have an abortion violates the constitutional rights of the person who is being aborted. In fact, the Bill of Rights is shredded for the sake of what? What? Convenience. That's all legal abortion is. It's convenient to kill the baby rather than take responsibility for him or her. And while that unwanted baby should be protected by our Bill of Rights, there's nothing in the Constitution that protects a woman's so-called right of convenience. Yet, we have these constitutional midgets, like the diminutive senator from Washington State, Patty Murray, who are constantly pretending that James Madison somehow wrote in invisible ink abortion in the founding document. Republican senators are pushing for backwards ideological bills to restrict women's constitutional right to abortion. Stop tape. All right. We all know, I think, that the United States Constitution does not contain the word abortion. There is no constitutional right to abortion in this republic. All there is is a 1973 Supreme Court ruling that allowed abortions to be performed in this country legally. That's it. There is no law on the books in the federal sense, on the federal statutes. There's no law about abortion, protecting a, quote, right to abortion, even legalizing abortion. It is being handled right now on a state-by-state -state issue, and frankly, that's probably the way it should be handled. Maybe it should have never been handled at all at the federal level. Maybe the Supreme Court should have never even weighed in in Roe versus Wade, should have rejected it and left it at the state level. But it is this process of the state-by-state -state, uh, injection of dealing with abortion that is now setting the foundation for possibly the overturn in the Supreme Court, possibly, of Roe versus Wade. We'll see how these lower court rulings turn out, but at some point, there's going to be judgment day at the United States Supreme Court and a full-blown challenge to Roe versus Wade in the 1973 ruling. But the point is, Patty Murray is wrong. There is no, quote, constitutional right to abortion. Now, these senators were debating just before voting on two bills. One was the Born Alive Act, and the other is the Pain Capable Act. Now, these are not just 
fancy names, uh, hot button words to describe these bills. They are what they say they are. The Born Alive Act, designed to protect babies who happen to survive the attempt to suck them down the sink. In other words, they're born alive. They're aborted, but they are still alive. And so what is the fiduciary duty of a doctor in that case? And doctors are supposed to be performing these abortions, right? Isn't there a higher fiduciary duty? There used to be a Hippocratic oath. Some doctors still abide by it. Other doctors throw it in the waste can along with the aborted babies. But the bottom line is all doctors should have a higher order, should they not, in terms of preserving life? Isn't that why you go into the field of medicine? Isn't that why you become a doctor? To protect life, to protect all life? And so here you have a baby that was sucked out of the womb but still has a heartbeat and is still in, I hate to say this, but still in one piece, still a human being, and we're having this debate over whether we should perform what we do with other children, other babies that are born, in terms of keeping that child alive because it already is alive? There's any kind of debate over this? What has happened to the moral compass of this society that we're even debating a, quote, born alive bill? And then the heartbeat bill. This one goes even a little bit deeper, and it's even harder for people like Patty Murray to um, decipher, I guess to understand, to comprehend, unless, of course, you're a radical like they are. And they vote summarily against these kind of bills. But the heartbeat bill, again, says what it is. If there's a detectable heartbeat, then there should be no abortion. Um, a lot of us believe that that's even not good enough, but it's a start. But it goes even before that, that there is pain I involved, that the, the fetus can feel pain during the process of abortion. There's a detectable heartbeat and that the fetus can feel pain. And that's what this bill was trying to protect. And so these people now, like Patty Murray and, and Chuck Schumer and the rest of them, are on the record against these bills that are designed to protect the constitutional rights of these soon-to-be Americans who should be allowed to prosper and, and live their lives. Instead, they're being sucked down a sink. So now they're on record for all the world to see that they are against life and they're against the Bill of Rights and enforcing the United States Constitution for all Americans. So why is there even a debate over protecting the life of a living human being who happened to survive an attempt to suck his or her life down a sink? Why are we debating this? It is a life. The fact that millions of Americans believe it's acceptable to destroy a little boy or girl, well, it speaks volumes about the moral state. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.